This is a video for homework one, problem 10, and this uh, problem has to do mainly with the empirical rule. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Okay, so first of all, we're given um, the data for 50 candies, and this is their weights in grams. And the first question that we're asked is how to, is to get the sample standard deviation, okay? So to do that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to this little box here in blue and click on it and open this in StatCrunch. And then what's really nice about StatCrunch is it's pretty intuitive, pretty easy. We're going to go to stat, summary stats, columns. So stat, summary stats, columns. And we're going to choose that we want to use the column that is marked variable one because that's where all our data has been put here. And we would like the standard deviation. Okay, so quick note on standard deviation in StatCrunch. Standard deviation here is the sample standard deviation. If you want the population standard deviation, remember the difference in those two formulas is that the sample standard deviation is divided by n minus one. The population standard deviation is only divided by n. We do want the sample one, but if you needed to get the population sample standard deviation, you want the unadjusted standard deviation, okay? So because we are dealing with a sample, we are just gonna use the marked standard deviation. And click compute. Okay, so here we're given our standard deviation. Now they only wanted up to two decimal places. So um, because two decimal places is a six and to the right is an eight, we're gonna round up and make that 0 0.07. As you can see here, that's the answer we got. Okay, now um, if you look here, they're saying on the basis of the histogram on the right, comment on the appropriateness of using the empirical rule. So here, if we wanna use the empirical rule, we're looking for a fairly symmetric graph, approximately normal. So if we look here, it's approximately normal. It's kind of the same on the left and the right. There really aren't any outliers. This doesn't have much skew to the right or skew to the left. If anything, I think it would be tiny bit skewed right, um, but really it's fairly symmetric. So yeah, it's okay to use the empirical rule. So there we go. The histogram is bell-shaped, so the empirical rule can be used. Now, what is the empirical rule? Okay, so this is how you're going to be doing uh, C, D, E, and F. It's all the empirical rule. I want to show you a picture from your text. Now this is on page 149 of your text and this illustrates the empirical rule. So what you do is you put your, your mean in the middle and I know it's using mu, we're gonna be using x bar because we're doing a sample. Um, you would put your mean in the middle and then you're gonna keep adding one standard deviation to get these barriers here. So if I add one standard deviation, I'll get a number. I add another standard deviation, I'll get a number. I add another standard deviation, I'll get a number. And the same thing going the other way. Subtract one standard deviation, subtract one standard deviation, and subtract one standard deviation. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, they tell us that the mean is 0.84. So that's going to be this middle number here. So we would say 0.84 is this middle number. Okay, now if we keep adding 0.07, Okay, one standard deviation from the mean will be taking 0.84 and adding 0.07. This would get us 0.91. So this value here, I wish I could draw on my screen, but I can't, would be 0.91. Then if I add another 0.07, that gets me to 0.98. If I add another 0.07, that gets me to 1.05. Okay, going the opposite direction, again, starting at 0.84, which is going to be in the middle. If I subtract 0.07, I'm gonna get 0.77. If I subtract 0.07 again, I'm gonna get 0.70. And if I subtract 0.07 again, I'm gonna get 0.63. Okay, so I know it's tough because I can't write on the screen for you to show you that. Um, my program just is not working for some reason for me. Um, but you can just take a piece of paper right now and kind of write down those values. So again, put 0.84 in the middle, add 0.07, add 0.07, add 0.07. Go back to the 0.84, subtract 0.07, subtract 0.07, subtract 0.07. So if you wanna go ahead and pause the video now so that you can make that small um, kind of drawing for yourself, go for it. Okay, so let's talk about how to answer these questions. They're asking, um, what percentage of candies with weights between 0.7 and 0.98, um, what would be those, that percentage? Okay, so how do we find that? So if you look here, in your text, and hopefully you did make that little drawing, um, they give you percentages. So if I'm like, for example, the mean, and I have, that would be 0.84, and then I have 0.91 here, 34% of my data values are going to be between 0.84 and 0.91, okay? So we have to say, okay, where 
are the values that they're talking about. And then I'm going to add up the percentages that are encompassed in those values. Okay, so the ones that they're talking about here, 0.7 and 0.98. So again, I'm hoping that you wrote down those values. 0.7 is actually two standard deviations below the mean, which would be here. And 0.98 is two standard deviations above the mean, which is over here. Now what's kind of nice is they're both two standard deviations. So if you look up here, we have within two standard deviations of the mean, okay, is 95%. They've actually added it up for us. But if you wanted to add it up, you'd use 13.5 plus 34 plus 34 plus 13.5, okay? Now to get the next one, it's saying determine the actual percentage of candies that weigh between 0.7 and 0.98. Um, the actual percentage is a little bit different than the empirical rule percentage. Oops, sorry. And um, the reason is that they're actually going to go ahead and, and, and take a look at the data itself. Now, I just want to show you under the question help. Sorry, my kids were just talking to me, so I had to pause for a second. <laughs> it's a little crazy over here sometimes. Okay. Um, so this was when they were labeling. I'm sorry, I just wanted to show you a value here. Okay. Okay, no. Okay, here we go. So it says to determine the actual percentage of candies that weigh between 0.7 and 0.98, they want you to go ahead and actually count all the candies that weigh between 0.7 and 0.98 and then divide that number by 50 because that's how many you have. Okay, so instead of using the empirical rule, which is going to get us, and of course, in this case, because we're talking about be, being approximately normal, right? Um, that means that the empirical rule is going to be fairly close, but it's not going to be perfect, okay? So what you're going to do here is you're going to add up, you're going to go through, and you're going to say, okay, is this one between 0.7 and 0.98? Yes, 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 and count them all up, okay? And once you have the number that are between those two values, you're just going to go ahead and divide by 50. And this is going to get you 98% or 0.98 initially. So we change that into a percentage. Now notice, even though they're different, they're pretty close, right? So it's just trying to show you that the empirical rule, even though we're using a graph here that isn't perfectly normal, perfectly symmetric, uh, perfectly bell-shaped, it's still getting pretty close to the actual percentage. Okay, then we're going to use the empirical rule again to determine the percentage with weights more than 0.91 grams. Now, more than 0.91, if you look at your little thing here, again, hopefully you have your drawing, 0.91 is one standard deviation from the mean. It's 0.84 plus 0.07. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up all the values here. So we do 13.5, 2.35, and 0.15. And if you add those together, whoops, that's going to get you your 16%. Okay, so I hope that that helps. Again, what you want to do is you want to, what I usually do, if I could actually show you my drawings here, I usually draw a nice little bell shape like this. I put the lines in, I put my mean in the middle, and then I add, 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 subtract, 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 and you can even write in your percentages if you would like as you learn your empirical rule and eventually they just kind of stick with you forever. So let me know if you have any more questions and I hope that that helped and I'm sorry about having to pause in the middle um, to tell my children to shush. Have a good night.